Hi, I'm Adair Waters. I'm with the Advent Archivers. And I thought before we st I started, I would put in a plug for the archivers. Uh, our mission is to organize and digitize or scan and then archive all of the historic records that we have hung on to at the Church of the Advent through the years. If anybody is inclined to join us in doing this, please let me know or let John Holmes know. We'll be glad to talk to you about it and tell you more about what we're doing. But what this leads us to, and in my case, uh, I was archiving some things a couple weeks ago, and I ran across the file uh, of, of our organ, uh, the Mahler organ, which was installed in 1947. It led me to look into the history of the organ use in the church building, and I learned some interesting things. If you'll recall, the original nave built in 1863 came to about right here. There was no mention uh, in the early days of an organ until in John Edmonds' book, I'm referring to the ladies of the church raised $600 for a small pipe organ, which was installed in 1879. It replaced a small cabinet organ that had been in use up until that time. Now, if you remember, a cabinet organ is the type organ where the organist actually works pedals to produce the air pressure to uh, play, the, play the music. Uh, the new organ that they installed in 1879 required a volunteer to actually man air pumps to keep the air flowing. The original building now was, was modified in 1897, and it was extended so that this chancel and sanctuary area were added, as well as the two transepts were expanded outward. Well, well, uh, According to Georgia Cleveland's diary, in 1891, the church bought an organ from Converse College and paid Converse $25 for it. Keep in mind that the original nave was expanded in 1897 after that was purchased, and it could very well be that the, the so-called Converse organ was reinstalled after the expansion of the church in 1897. We do have an a photograph inside the church circa 1925 that shows that organ installed actually right here against this wall. The organist faced the wall and there was a large arch above it all the way up to the sloped part of the ceiling. And in that arch were organ pipes. Also, there were organ pipes fastened to the wall right here in front of the baptismal uh, alcove now. Uh, they don't look like they were within the alcove. They look like they were uh, outside and mounted on the wall. Could have had some behind it, though. By 1922, it was noted that, that the organ that was in use then needed repair or being replaced. But the vestry decided not to do anything at that time. They simply hired more paid singers to, to increase the quality of the music in the church. Now, in 1945, the organist and choir master, a Mr. John Lewis, wrote that, uh, or notified the vestry that the organ either needed to be rebuilt or replaced. And this, in conjunction with discovering a lot of termite damage to the structure under that organ, this seemed to have started the process of acquiring a new organ for the church. It was realized that a new one was needed. Now, in 1946, the vestry was prepared to buy a Hammond organ for $3,500. But the Stimson family, members of the church, agreed to loan the church a Grand Ste uh, Steinway grand piano, and that seemed to suffice until the organ was installed. We have a picture dated circa 1945. Uh, I know that's about the right time because I recognize Caper Satterley who arrived here in 1944. This picture clearly shows the Mahler organ installed here behind the pulpit where it was for years. Um, the, organ, the organist sat here facing the choir. The organ pipes were installed in a room above the sacristy, that arch was still in place for years, but the pipes were no longer in that arch. The pipes had been moved up to the, uh, up to the room above the sacristy. In 1946, 
in July, by July, they had decided, the vestry had decided to buy a Skinner organ. But it was too large for the space that was assigned not only for the organ console, but for the pipes, which were still going to be on, on that side of the uh, chancel. So they decided to buy a slightly more expensive and finer Dutch organ made by the Mahler Company. Mahler also agreed to provide a temporary organ uh, for use in the meantime while our new organ was being built. The Mahler organ was installed in late 1947. The Mahler was an electro-pneumatic organ, meaning that when a key was pushed here, an electrical signal opened a valve to let air flow through the, uh, through the pipes. The choir sat in pews here the pews were perpendicular to the pews in the nave, and the choir members, most of them faced the organist looking this way. There were some pews on this side where the choir members could also face that way. As we learned later on, though, in planning for, uh, for another organ, this was not the best arrangement for the uh, performance of the instrument within the church. Apparently, a number of organ committees worked through the years. Uh, in 1973, a report by the church organ committee, it noted that leather bellows were wearing out and needed to be replaced, that the sound was limited by the location of the pipes and the direction in which they faced. It was recommended at that time, now this is 1973, remember, it was recommended at that time that the organ be moved to the gallery where it is today. And they estimated that a new organ would cost $65,000. There were two subsequent reports in 1980 by two different organ manufacturers who visited us here at this church. The things that they noted were that some of the keys on the organ and some of the stops were not working, that the leathers needed to be replaced. A humidifier should be installed to keep, the, keep moisture in the woodwork. Corrosion was suspected on the electrical connections, preventing a lot of these keys from working. And that heating the building in winter dropped the humidity levels, which, which really robbed the organ of the moisture necessary to keep it well sealed. Uh, and at this time, they also suggested that the organ would be better placed in the gallery. Now in 1984, after much discussion, a committee headed by Mac Davis had proposals in hand and decided to buy the Flintrop organ, which we enjoy today. Henry Barton, the rector at the time, signed an agreement with the Flintrop Company on March 11th of 1985 for 527,000 guilders, Dutch guilders. It's a good thing that we made that agreement to pay in guilders because the value of the dollar uh, strengthened over the period of time, and it actually saved us about thirty dollars or $40,000 paying in guilders. The total cost was estimated to be about $277,000 for the new organ at that time. Flintrop began building our instrument in March of 1988, and it was installed by Flintrop personnel here early in 1989. The flintrop is very typical of some of the fine old organs that last for years. It's self-contained, meaning that all the, all the pipes um, are right there in the cabinet that you see from down here in the nave. Also, the pipes, the valves are activated by a tracker mechanism rather than electro-pneumatic, meaning that there is a direct mechanical connection when the organist pushes a key, a rod moves and opens the valve. It's a direct connection there, so there's no, no corrosion to worry about. Humidity is still an issue, and it's an issue that we suffer up there because it is dry here when the heat is on in the wintertime. But at that time, both Flintrop and our new organist, John Turnbull, agreed and insisted that the organ needed to be in the gallery, not down here facing with the pipes facing in the wrong direction. So, uh, Flintrop was installed in January of 1989. Now in 1988, the vestry did agree to sell the old Mahler organ to the Cathwood Baptist Church in Columbia for $2,000. So again, 
we'd love to have people join us on the Archives Committee. If you'd like to learn more about this sort of thing, um, please let me know or let John Holmes know, and we'd love to talk to you about the Advent Archivers. Thank you.